so on and so forth. Um, Blockbuster. When we first heard Mike Chapman's demo, Mick Tucker and I, the, the band's drummer, uh, thought uh, he wants us to do a blues song because we knew the riff straight away. It came from so many different uh, blues songs, especially uh, I'm a Man. Uh, we were big fans of the Yardbirds at that sort of time. We were still listening to you know, 60s music rather than um, anything else. And when we got in, actually got into the studio, the band had kind of routined a little bit, trying to put a little bit of edge and a little bit of hardness into it. But the producer, Phil, immediately wanted it to be a bit more jaunty, a little bit more, you know, uh, with a little bit of uh, syncopation and swing in it. Well, the end result is a number one record, so you can't argue with that. So. The actual demo that Mike did was um, very distinctive and all the parts that you hear on the finished record are there. It's not a matter of um, thinking that, you know, uh, we overly influenced. Um, I think that uh, mixed drums with the floor tom and, and the way that the guitar riff was played slightly more open than a blues guy would play it um, helped. but. Quite frankly, you know, he had it all, all the parts were there on the demo and only an idiot would have missed the fact that it was going to be as successful as it was. The cops are out, they're running about, don't know if they'll ever be able to blockbuster out. He's got to be caught, he's got to be tough, because he is more evil than anyone here ever loved. When we went into the studio uh, we, with Blockbuster, we... I think this was the first one where we all felt comfortable and it was a fairly quick recording. I don't remember there being hardly any problems other than the fact that um, when it came to doing the high R's, uh, Mike Chapman definitely muscled his way in and it was he and I who did the majority of those um, stratospheric um, uh, vocals, so there we are. We'd come to a point in our career where people were starting to offer us equipment and uh, Vox being, you know, one of the main um, suppliers of gear at that time uh, had offered us the opportunity to use some of their equipment. Well, I was already using um, a Vox anyway. We were also using Marshalls on stage, which were too big for the studio. Blockbuster was the first record where we were going to be using the new amps and at the last minute, somebody came to us and said, well, the guy who set up Vox has left, Jennings. Um, he's got his own range of gear, the AC40 rather than the AC30. And we said, well, let's give him a go. When we met him, he said, I've actually made a, a very significant improvement. He said, there's more tonal um, things that you can do with this amp. Plus also, he said, it doesn't catch fire like the old ones used to. So I thought, well, that's a bonus. This isn't the actual guitar from the Blockbuster sessions. I'm afraid that one is in the British Music Experience at the O2 Arena in London in their sort of museum part. It's probably safer there than anywhere else. Um, it's become a little bit fragile and um, quite frankly, it's a guitar of historic importance, especially to me. So the, the closest we've got is a reissue 1963 Block uh, 335 um, with a Bigsby. And this is exactly the setup that I used on Blockbuster. Track.
<laughs> yeah, it's so simple when you know how, isn't it? The, uh, the siren uh, was Phil Wayman's idea. It was recorded with the tape slightly slowed down so that when it comes in, it's not so, you don't get that sort of farting noise, which everybody found slightly disagreeable. In America, however, there was a whole um, different um, scenario. The original recording that was released had the siren on it, and because it took a few factory workers off the shop floor to have a coffee break when the record came on on the radio, somebody said, we're not going to play that record anymore if that keeps happening. So we had to do a version that didn't actually have the siren on it. And I actually think it probably impacted on the fact that it's stiff just outside the top 40 in America. With the siren, it might have gone up to number one, but without it, it became a little bit... We were horrified. Two bands with the same label even recorded the same guitar riff at the same time. David Bowie had Gene Genie and The Sweet had Blockbuster. They released David Bowie's a week before they released ours. And we thought, well, once you've heard that guitar riff, um, that'll be the end of Blockbuster. We were all so, you know, scared. Ours went to number one and his went to number two. That's the end result of that. But it just shows you the public are not listening to blues guitar riffs, are they? They're just listening to songs. Oh. 